हेलो स्टूडेंट गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम डॉक्टर अजय कुमार सिन्हा प्रोफेसर ऑफ केमिस्ट्री टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस पावरफुल प्रॉपलेंट ऑफ चंद्रायन पावरफुल प्रॉपलेंट ऑफ चंद्रायन बिफोर गोइंग टू डेप्थ इन प्रॉपलेंट आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस सम टर्म्स विच आर रिक्वायर्ड ड्यूरिंग स्टडी ऑफ प्रॉपलेंट क्रायोजेनिक रॉकेट इंजन फर्स्ट क्रायोजेनिक रॉकेट इंजन वॉट इज दिस दिस इज ए रॉकेट इंजन दैट यूजेज ए क्रायोजेनिक फ्यूएल एंड ऑक्सीडाइजर दैट इज बोथ इट्स फ्यूएल एंड ऑक्सीडाइजर्स आर गैसेस विच हैव बीन लिक्विफाइड एंड आर स्टोर्ड एट वेरी लो टेम्परेचर एज फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर हाइड्रोजन इट इज स्टोर्ड एट स्टोर्ड एट माइनस वन एट्टी थ्री डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड ऑक्सीजन इज स्टोर्ड एट माइनस टू फिफ्टी डिग्री टू फिफ्टी थ्री डिग्री सेल्सियस इन द एप्रोप्रिएट tank now question arises why so so low temperature why so so low temperature is required then its answer is that due to very low temperature often encountered in a space and the and the absence of an environment that supports combustion okay these are the region first main region is that due to low very low temperature often encountered in a space for this main region low temperature of fuel is required it is liquefied okay hydrogen liquefied hydrogen liquefied hydrogen hydrogen and uh, liquefied oxygen is used here this due to the very low temperature often encountered in contact in a space okay by the rocket and also there is a absence of an environment there is the absence of an environment that supports that supports combustion on earth oxygen is abundant we require oxygen for burning then on on earth it is available but in the space this oxygen is not available for burning purpose for combustion purpose that's why oxidizer is used oxidizer provides oxygen that's why here uh, with uh, rocket or in rocket oxidizer is used with uh, liquid hydrogen always with liquid hydrogen and oxidizer is required that is oxygen liquid oxygen then now uh, this i have told about the uh, distance why low temperature is required now next term i am going to tell thrust thrust what is the thrust thrust is the force which moves an aircraft through the air thrust is used thrust is used to overcome the drag of an airplane and to overcome the weight of a rocket to overcome the weight of a rocket now i am going to tell about the propellant but before uh, propellant some points i want to tell about the chandrayaan first chandrayaan 3 is unmanned this is the first point Chandrayaan three is unmanned. No man is there. 
no scientist gone with this chandrayaan okay it is unmanned second what is the launching vehicles what is the name name of launching vehicles then it is lv m3 m4 l means launching v means vehicles correct these are the chain number or name you can tell lb m3 m4 this is the launching vehicles okay rockets name and what is the you can say uh, this uh, total mass what is the mass of uh, chandrayaan then total weight or you can tell total mass is 3900 kg very big very heavy 3900 kg and uh, distance what is the distance between uh, earth and moon then it is 384400 km 384400 km now you can see this heavy weight this heavy weight of 3900 kg and so big distance 384400 km who will carry this heavy heavy weight chandrayaan who will carry then for this now this uh, powerful propellant hydrogen and liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen are ready both are powerful propellant then this liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen it will carry this this propellant will carry this heavy weight heavy weight chandrayaan to the moon now i am coming in details actually this this the uh, can say uh, heavy weight plus uh, large distance very large distance then for that obviously more uh, fuel will be required then where will you keep where it is kept actually where it is kept uh, these liquids these uh, uh, fuels then for that i am telling you that uh, their tank is there tank a special tank Cry- cryogens upper stage designated c25 cryogenic engine 25 that is uh, 4 meter in diameter that tank diameter is 4 meter and uh, it is 13.5 meter long 13 13.5 meter long and its diameter is 4 meter and this tank contains 13.5 metric tons of liquid oxygen and 28 metric tons of liquid hydrogen and it is kept under pressure again i am telling you amount of hydrogen and helium liquid liquid hydrogen is 13.5 metric tons and liquid hydrogen is 28 metric tons and these liquids are kept under pressure it is pressurized by these are pressurized by helium is stored in submerged bottles it is powered by it is powered by a single ce20 means congest this uh, cryogenic engine 20 okay it is powered by a single ce20 engine producing 200 kn of thrust 200 kn of thrust what is the kn k is kilo n is newton then this kn actually is the unit of thrust 
then i told you that this engine ce20 engine it uh, it produces or here it will produce 200 kn of thrust c20 engine okay this uh, here it is powered this uh, um, chandrayaan is powered by a single c20 engine producing 200 kn of thrust now here actually in this chandrayaan three engines are there three engine will work here while the rocket first stage is powered by solid fuel the second stage is by liquid fuel and the third and final stage consist of cryogenic engine powered by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen this i have told about the this engines and three stages first stage rocket first stage is powered by solid fuel the second stage is powered by liquid fuel and third and final stage consist of cryogenic engine powered by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen isro isro indian space research organization is using highly toxic and corrosive fuel what is the name of fuel ud udmh udmh u means unsymmetrical d means dimethyl and h means hydrogen means fuel name is unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrogen it is used along with oxidizer what is the name of oxidizer then its name is n2o4 n2o4 called nitrogen tetraoxide isro has also developed isro sin isro sin isro s e n e isro sin one special type of rocket grade version of kerosene as an alternative to this is actually alternative to what conventional hydrogen rocket fuel it is alternative to hydrogen rocket fuel it is developed by isro scientist okay and this fuel name is propellant name is isro sin i s r o s e n e isro sin now during the this journey from journey from earth to moon journey from earth to moon in this period uh, lbm3 lbm3 rocket will carry its 3895 kg play load 3895 kg play payload okay 3895 kg payload using three different rocket power stage okay three different rocket power stage with a maximum thrust maximum thrust of 10.242 km per second or you can tell over 36000 km per hour being provided by indigenous cryogenic engine c25 this is developed in india by isro okay indigenous cryogenic c25 engine and this engine actually is used in is in uh, this chandrayaan and this c25 engine fired will be fired on the rocket in the final phase just ahead of just ahead of separation of the chandrayaan 3 this c25 engine 
will be fired on the rocket in the final phase just ahead of the separation of the chandrayaan 3 now question arises suppose chandrayaan reached there on the chandrayaan reached there on the moon after that what will happen suppose it reached then there is no scientist no scientist then who will study the moon who will study the surface of moon then there is a one representative for scientist okay just like a robot robot here name is lander and rover lander and rover it is actually six wheeled lander and rover the six wheeled lander and rover model of chandrayaan 3 is a configured a configured with payloads that would provide data to the scientist community on the properties of lunar soil and uh, rocks what type of soils are there what type of rocks are there that properties of lunar soil and rocks including chemical and elemental composition that will be given to the scientific community okay data to the scientific community this data will be provided provided will be provided to the scientist okay of the properties of lunar cells what are the properties of the soils on uh, moon and what are the rocks what is their chemical and elemental composition now i will come to the this uh, propellant different types of uh, propellant or fuels there are four types generally four types of uh, propellants are used first is petroleum second is cryogens and third is first is petroleum second is cryogens third is hypergolic hypergolic and fourth one also you can tell alcohol petroleum fuels are those refined from crude oil and are mixture of complex hydrocarbons that is organic compounds containing only carbon and hydrogen now come to the solid fuel what is the solid fuel actually the example what i am going to tell you that is used by nasa okay nasa then what is that solid fuel the solid fuel is actually powdered aluminum powdered aluminum it is a form similar to the foil perhaps in your kitchen foil f o i l foil wraps w r a p s foil wraps generally it is used in kitchen and it is mixed with oxygen provided by a chemical called ammonium perchlorate ammonium perchlorate then solid fuel is a actually powdered aluminum a form similar to the foil wraps in your kitchen mixed with oxygen provided by a chemical called ammonium perchlorate okay this i have told you about the solid solid fuel now again i will tell more about the fuels fuels for a space ship actually generally rocket will uh, almost all rocket will use uh, same type of fuel but some uh, like uh, chandrayaan now a special type of fuels are used then fuels for a space ship what are the fuels for a space ship i am telling you it is hydrogen or now question arises always hydrogen 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 
why hydrogen why only hydrogen why not others then now i am telling you its reason hydrogen a light and uh, extremely powerful rocket propellant has the lowest molecular weight of any known substance any known substance and burns with extreme intensity this is the reason why hydrogen is used why not others hydrogen il again i am telling hydrogen a light and extremely powerful rocket propellant has the lowest molecular weight of any known substance and burns with extreme intensity what is extreme intensity then its temperature will go up to 5500 degree fahrenheit 5500 degree fahrenheit we measure our fever in terms of fahrenheit only okay now i am going to tell most common rocket fuel propellant common common propellant then liquid hydrogen and rocket grade kerosene also called rp1 rp1 okay these are the common rocket fuel or propellant these are usually burned with liquid oxygen liquid oxygen means you can tell l o x l means liquid o x means oxygen same way for the liquid hydrogen you can tell l h liquid l means liquid h means hydrogen here one oil is used also one oil is also used along with fuels propellant what is that which fuel, which oil is used in the rocket then actually it is nitric acid nitric acid now i will tell little details rocket grade petroleum is called rp1 r means rocket p means pet, uh, propellant okay rp1 rocket grade petroleum is called rp1 and consist of highly refined kerosene mixed with liquid oxygen hypergols are able to self ignite on contact between the fuel and oxidizer these fuels simply need simply need nitric acid in order to ignite and are frequently used for propulsion frequently used for propulsion when out in space now most efficient propellant most efficient propellant i am telling about the rocket's main engine use a combination of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen hydrogen has the lowest molecular weight of any known substance making it benefit of hydrogen further benefit i am telling you okay this hydrogen has the lowest molecular weight of any known substance making it ideal for keeping the weight of rocket relatively small when combined when combined with liquid oxygen hydrogen creates the most efficient thrust of any rocket propellant i have told you it creates around 36000 km per hour okay then now i already discussed four types of rocket fuels or propellants four types already i told you that is the first is the kerosene second is alcohol third is hydrogen and its derivative and fourth is liquid hydrogen now what are the oxidizers what are the name of oxidizers then now i am telling you name of oxidizer then first is nitric acid it function as a oil as well as oxidizer second is n2o4 nitrogen tetroxide 
थर्ड वन इज लिक्विड ऑक्सीजन एंड फोर्थ वन इज लिक्विड फ्लोरिन फ्लोरिन इज ऑल्सो यूज एज ऑक्सीडाइजर नाउ लिटिल मोर अबाउट फ्यूएल्स एक्चुअली ऑन मून सम स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ फ्यूएल इज फाउंड विच फ्यूएल इज फाउंड इन मून ऑन द मून मून सम स्पेशल फ्यूएल इज फाउंड वॉट इज दैट अनलाइक अर्थ नॉट लाइक अर्थ अनलाइक अनलाइक अर्थ विच प्रोटेक्टेड बाई इट्स मैग्नेटिक फील्ड बट द मून हैज बीन बम्बार्डेड विथ लार्ज क्वान्टिटी ऑफ हीलियम थ्री आइसोटोप्स ऑफ हीलियम एंड दिस इज ए बाय द सोलर विंड सोलर विंड मीन्स दिस आवर अर्थ इज प्रोटेक्टेड बाय इट्स मैग्नेटिक फील्ड वाइल द मून हैज बीन बम्बार्डेड विथ लार्ज क्वान्टिटीज ऑफ हीलियम थ्री by the solar wind now what about the fuels used in apollo apollo satellite you know it was sent in space then that time which fuel was fuel was used then uh, i am telling about that that was actually hydrogen oxygen fuel cell hydrogen oxygen fuel cell apollo used uh, fuel cells and that fuel cell combined hydrogen and oxygen it is also called hydrogen oxygen fuel cells what was the use of this hydrogen oxygen fuel cells for what purpose this fuel cells was used then it had two purpose first first this generated electrical power means volt for the space craft and second its use was that it created water also means it two two problem it solved first electrical power and second water problem actually this water this water from where it came then this when hydrogen oxygen fuel cell will uh, will uh, work that time with reaction of s2 and o2 it forms h2o okay h2 plus o2 you know 2 h2 plus o2 to h2 h2o it will form water then that water actually this water was used by the astronauts for drinking purpose now what was the temperature uh, what is the temperature of moon now in uh, this thing uh, chandrayaan now liquid liquid hydrogen liquid liquid hydrogen and liquid uh, oxygen are going to be used then here now uh, this uh, you should we should know what is that temperature of a moon why they are using so low temperature fuel then temperature of moon in a day time it is 120 degree centigrade 120 degree centigrade and in kelvin 400 kelvin this is at lunar equator while at night at night gets to a chilly moon uh, night i am talking about in night uh, temperature gets to a chilly means uh, minus 208 degree fahrenheit minus 208 to 208 degree fahrenheit means minus 130 degree centigrade minus 130 degree centigrade and uh, in a term of kelvin you can tell 140 140 okay 140 kelvin then this is the temperature i have told you this temperature is uh, available on this temperature is available on uh, moon okay now this moon temperature i told you now what is actually temperature of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen then uh, liquid uh, hydrogen hydrogen actually hydrogen liquefies 
हाइड्रोजन लिक्विफाइड एट माइनस टू फोर्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस माइनस टू फोर्टी डिग्री डिग्री सेल्सियस इट एक्चुअली इट इज द क्रिटिकल टेम्परेचर ऑफ हाइड्रोजन माइनस टू फोर्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड वॉट अबाउट ऑक्सीजन देन ऑक्सीजन टेम्परेचर दैट इज द क्रिटिकल टेम्परेचर ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इज माइनस वन वन नाइन डिग्री सेल्सियस माइनस वन वन नाइन हंड्रेड नाइनटीन डिग्री सेल्सियस सो लो टेम्परेचर एंड वाट वॉज द प्रेशर क्रिटिकल प्रेशर एक्चुअली ओनली बाई टेम्परेचर नथिंग विल हैपन ओनली बाई लोअरिंग द टेम्परेचर गैस विल नॉट लिक्विफाई फर्स्ट यू हैव टू फर्स्ट यू हैव टू कूल इट द टेम्परेचर अप टू माइनस टू फोर्टी फॉर द हाइड्रोजन एंड ओनली देन यू हैव टू अप्लाय प्रेशर देन इट विल लिक्विफाई If temperature low temperature will not maintain, then whatever pressure you apply, it will not liquefy. Then uh, after cooling up to minus two forty degree centigrade uh, degree Celsius, if pressure of if pressure of thirteen bar B A R bar pressure of thirteen bar plus minus point zero one bar is applied, then liquid. and then hydrogen gas liquefies means it will liquefy okay after applying 13 plus minus 0.01 bar 13 bar you can tell only then uh, hydrogen gas will liquefy it will convert to liquid and what about the oxygen then oxygen required 50.43 प्लस माइनस पॉइंट जीरो फाइव बार फिफ्टी पॉइंट फोर थ्री बार प्रेशर इज रिक्वायर्ड मीन्स आफ्टर कूलिंग ऑक्सीजन एट वन माइनस वन वन नाइन डिग्री सेल्सियस आफ्टर कूलिंग ऑक्सीजन अप टू माइनस वन वन नाइन डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड अप्लाइंग प्रेशर ऑफ फिफ्टी पॉइंट फोर थ्री बार ओनली देन ऑक्सीजन गैस विल लिक्विफाई then i have told about the temperature this is also called critical temperature and critical pressure of hydrogen and oxygen then here i have told you that uh, this uh, temperature is very less on the moon particularly uh, night time and actually real structure of moon uh, this uh, moon is not known big big i can say this it is expected big mountain like that then this mountain actually stops the sunlight hence it creates darkness it creates darkness then it is not well known where it is dark in day time also it will be dark then this is a big problem then that problem is solved by solar light solar okay solar cell or photovoltaic 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 cell but photovoltaic cell has a limitation in day time only it will work in a night it will not work when no sunlight then no it will not work photovoltaic cell will stop functioning this is the problem a light problem then now actually success of this mission that is the our uh, chandrayaan 3 depends upon many situation and correct projection of the missile at uh, this uh, correct projection of this uh, uh, chandrayaan is very very important and our success our success depend upon correct projection it should reach to the right place because mountain is very Uh, not uh, you can say their surface is not as smooth it is very rough what type of uh, this surface is there water may be also there and so many things real real challenging task is is hidden only there just uh, 
लैंडिंग टाइम लैंडिंग टाइम इज द रियल यू कैन से 